So now let's talk about conditional distributions. Uh, we have already talked a little bit about conditional distribution of discrete random variables. So given the value of the other discrete random variable, we were describing the uh, distribution of the, uh, the, the other one. So let us formalize that and talk about joint distribu uh, conditional distribution of uh, continuous random variables. So, but first uh, about the discrete case, uh, if we have jointly distributed random variables x and y, uh, which are discrete, with values xi and yj, and we assume that the joint PMF is given by this, so probability that x is taking the value xi and y is taking the value yj is pij, then the conditional PMF, probability mass function of y, given that x is equal to xi, was defined by the following. So probability that y is taking the value uh, yj when given that x is equal to xi is this joint probability so the probability that x is equal to xi and y is equal to yj so pij over the probability that x is equal to xi and the sum well this can be calculated by summing this over all xi well all uh, yj sorry so to calculate the probability that x is equal to xi, we need to sum these probabilities over all j. So sum out this y. Okay, well, I was denoting this uh, as the distribution of y given that x is equal to xi. <coughs> now, let's talk about the continuous case. Now assume that x and y are jointly continuous random variables with the joint PDF fxy. And let f of x be the marginal PDF of x. So we define the conditional PDF of y. So PDF of y given that x is equal to x by the following formula. So uh, the conditional PDF of y given x at the point y given the value of x. So I'm reading like that is the joint PDF at the point x, y over the uh, marginal PDF of X for any value of Y. Uh, well, this conditional PDF is defined for all X where this is larger than zero. I'm using the following notation, by the way, for this uh, conditional PDF. I'm writing the PDF of Y given that X is equal to X at the point Y. So conditional PDF of y given x is equal to x is uh, joint over the marginal of x and interpret that as a pdf of random variable y given x is equal to x or the pdf of y given that x is equal to x okay uh, it is easy to prove that this integral is one by using the definition it is easy to prove that this integral over r is one so f uh, sub y given x is equal to x is a legitimate PDF. So this is a PDF of this new random variable which we will call conditional random variable y given x is equal to x. Now having that uh, PDF we can calculate probabilities we want. Say if a is a subset in R then the probability that y will be in R a given that x is equal to x is just the integral of this conditional probability over that a. In the same way, uh, we can define the conditional pro uh, PDF of x given that y is equal to y. We are just interchanging the places of uh, x and y. So f x given y at the point x given y is equal to y is the joint PDF over the marginal PDF of y for all points where this is non-zero. Then clearly, if we will just calculate like in Bayes formula for just events, if we will calculate joint PDF, express joint PDF from this and from the previous uh, equation, previous definition, uh, then we will obtain the following. So the uh, conditional PDF 
of x given y is equal to small y is the conditional PDF of y given x is equal to x times the marginal uh, PDF of x over the marginal PDF of y. And we can calculate this marginal PDF of y by using the following. So we are using this and we are integrating this. We are, I'm just writing the same thing and integrating over x. So uh, instead of x, I'm plugging t uh, to change the name of that variable. So I'm integrating the mar uh, conditional PDF of y given x times the PDF of x over r. And this is called the base rule for continuous random variables. This is very similar to our base rule we have worked with for events. And here under the, uh, the in this fraction in that case, in the previous case, in the case of events, we had sum over all possible values. And here again, we have sum, well, in this fact, infinite sum, something like infinite sum or integration over all possible values of x. Now, uh, an example. So assume that the joint PDF of x and y is given in the following form. So inside this, uh, well, let me draw maybe, yeah. This is x, this is y. So the support is half disk, upper half of the disk. So x squared plus y squared is less or equal than one and y is larger than zero, so upper part. So I will have something like this, minus one, one. one. This is our support. Uh, f is k here. So f is equal to k constant here, and f is zero otherwise. Okay, find the value of k, easy, uh, because uh, we need to have that the integral of our f over r2 needs to be one. So uh, over r2, because f is zero outside of this, we need to integrate over that. So uh, over the D, say, this is the region D of F dx dy. And because this is constant K, I will have K times the integral of one and the integral of one is the array of D. And array of D is easy to calculate half the array of uh, our unit disk. This is K times uh, pi over 2. And from this we will have k is 2 over pi. Well, I will not use this, maybe I will use that to generate uh, for solving uh, the part d, but I will use just k for these two cases, two, pro two parts. Okay, so the second part is find the marginal pdf of x, fx. Okay, so let me write it here. First I'm drawing. This is the support, minus one, one. Here our f is, well, two over pi, let me write it. Now marginal PDF of I need to calculate f x of x. We have the following formula to calculate that. So I'm integrating out from joint PDF the variable y. So I'm integrating over y uh, for y with respect to y from minus infinity to plus infinity. So I will consider two cases. If x is here, I'm integrating over y over this line. Maybe I will take another color. Over this line, then I will get zero because uh, my f is zero here for this x. I'm fixing this x and integrating over y, so integrating over this line um, horizontal, uh, well, parallel to uh, y. 
Okay, if x is here, again, if I'm integrating over the line with the coordinate uh, x, uh, x coordinate, first coordinate x, then again, I will get zero because my f is zero here. So I will have the following result. If x is not in minus one, one, then f x, x is, um, this is zero. Now it remains to consider the case when x is between minus one and one. This is the interesting case. So if my x is here, say x is here, then the marginal PDF of x will be the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity f x y dy. And this will be, uh, I need to integrate over the whole line passing through this point x and parallel to um, o y. Uh, outside of this portion, uh, my f will be zero. So I am in fact integrating over zero to this point. And this point is calculated by using the equation of this boundary of this circle and the equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to one. So y is equal to, because again, we are dealing with the upper part, uh, plus uh, square plus sign uh, in front of the squared, one minus x squared. So I'm integrating from zero to square root of one minus x squared. Um, here our f is f is k or 2 over pi dy. So I will have, uh, this will go out, I'm integrating 1 and integral of 1 over some interval is giving the length of that interval. So 2 pi times the square root of 1 minus x squared. So this will be the value of f uh, if x is between minus 1 and 1. So I'm erasing this part so I'm erasing this part and are writing what we have obtained it for, for our f. So f was the following. The uh, marginal PDF of x is 2 over pi square root of 1 minus x squared if x is between minus 1 and 1 and 0 otherwise. Minus one and one. Okay. So let's move to our problem. So we have solved this part. We have calculated the marginal PDF. And the second part is to find the conditional distribution of y given x is equal to x. So uh, I need to calculate the following, the conditional distribution, conditional PDF. Conditional PDF of y given x is equal to x. So if x is equal to x, I want to find the distribution of y over this line, in fact. At the point y, y is changing from, uh, from 0 to this point. Okay, by definition, this is equal to fxy over fxx. This was the definition of that conditional PDF. Now I'm considering cases. Well, this is um, non-zero. Here we have fixed x. So x is between minus one and one. If x is not between minus one and one, uh, then this is zero. Then this is zero. I cannot use this formula. But if x is outside of minus 1 and 1, say x is here, and we cannot talk about, no need to talk about the distribution of y given this x, because uh, this value x cannot happen in this case. So we, can have, we can't have the value x is equal to this x or the, that x. So we need to take care only about the cases when x is between minus 1 and 1. So uh, here 
for this we need to have let me write that x is between minus one and one okay now for this equality for the next part uh, we need to uh, take care of the values of f so outside of this uh, red region f is zero so uh, either i will have zero so i will have the following so no need for this zero if so now x is fixed uh, but if if x is fixed uh, I will have the following. If y is not in 0 to square root of 1 minus x squared, then uh, this is 0. What I mean by that, let me show here, or uh, maybe I can take another color. x is fixed. I'm considering all possible values of y. If y is here, or y is here, so outside of that interval 0 square root of 1 minus x squared, then my uh, joint PDF, this f is 0 in that case. So we are obtaining this ratio, this uh, fraction is 0, the value of conditional PDF is 0. So here f is 0. Okay, but what about the other case, in, in interesting case is when, sorry, uh, when y is between 0 and 1 minus x squared. If y is between 0 and 1 minus x squared, so if our point in fact is here, so y is between this and that and x is fixed, so we will have this is equal to uh, 2 over pi. So this is 2 over pi now, in this case this is 2 over pi, and we know the value, this is equal to 2 over pi times this, for x because x is between minus 1 and 1. So I will have 2 over pi over 2 over pi times square root of 1 minus x squared. If y is between 0 and square root of 1 minus x squared. So finally, if I will do calculations, I will have, uh, I'm cancelling this, 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared if y is between 0 and 1 minus x squared and 0 otherwise if y is not in this interval 0 square root of 1 minus x squared okay and you can see that the variable here is y so this is constant in terms of y so constant if y is in this interval and zero otherwise. And but this is exactly saying that my conditional random variable is uniformly distributed over the interval zero square root of one minus x squared. If you will write the PDF of this random variable, you will obtain exactly this. So if I am fixing the value of x, what is the interpretation or idea? If I am fixing x, say this is my new x, then y is changing uh, inside that region. y is changing from 0 to this point. This point is square root of 1 minus x squared. And y is uniformly distributed here. That is the idea. So conditional probability is uniform for y. Let me move back to our problem. So we have found that conditional distribution of y given x is x. So this is uniform uh, from 0 to square root of 1 minus x squared. And generate a random sample from this distribution. And the idea is the following. Uh, we can do the following. To generate a point here x y from that distribution um, we are doing the following first we are generating x using this distribution from this distribution and we are generating for that fixed x we are plugging that obtained value here and we are generating y from uniform from uh, 0 to that square root of 1 minus that obtained value squared. 
and that point x y is one of the possible points from this distribution. Uh, I have promised to uh, solve separately that uh, computer R problem, so I will do this with that with that video separately. Okay, let's move forward. Person A is choosing a real number at random from 0, 1, uniformly. If the number chosen is x, then the second person is choosing at random a number from minus x to x. Say, if I am choosing 0, 0.3 from here, then the second person is choosing from minus 0, 0.3 to 0, 0.3, again, uniformly. What is the joint distribution of the chosen pair of numbers x and y? So, to solve this, let's denote by x uh, the first person A's choice and y is the second person B's choice. Second person B say B's choice. Okay, so what is given here? Let me uh, translate to mathematical form. Uh, what is given the statement of this problem. So A is choosing a real number uh, uniformly from 0 to 1. That means X is uniform from 0 to 1. This is easy. So if the number chosen is X, so if X is equal to X, the number of chosen by the first person is X, then the second person's choice, so Y, given that X is equal to X, is uniform random number from minus x to x. So uniform from minus x to x. So this is what is given by that condition. Now we want to find the joint distribution uh, of x of this pair x, y. <coughs> Say joint PDF. Well, uh, we have that f, y, given x is equal to x at the point y is, by definition, f x y joint PDF over the marginal PDF of x. Now, from this we will obtain that the joint PDF is the product of these two, uh, f y given this conditional PDF times f x x. And this is easy to calculate. This is easy to calculate because we have everything. So um, I'm erasing this part and writing what we have. So we have the following. So f of x at the point x is, because x is uniform in 0, 1, f of x will be 1 if uh, x is between 0, 1 and 0 if x is outside of that. Interval, zero, 1. Okay, so what this means? This means if this is uniform, then the PDF of that y given x is equal to x at the point y is. So uniform in this interval means the PDF is 1 over the length of this interval, 1 over 2x, if y is the variable is y. If y is between minus x and x, and zero otherwise, if y is not in minus x, x. Okay, so we need to multiply this, this times that. So what we will obtain, we will obtain the following. So this is equal to, well, this is equal to the following. Uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will multiply this to that, we will have several values. So. Uh, well, in fact, we will have only two values. Either we are multiplying 1 with this and we are obtaining 1 over 2x or we are, multi we are getting 0 because one of the uh, uh, terms here it will be 0. So in which case we will obtain 1 over 2x if x is between, x is between 0 and 1 and y is between and y is between minus x to x and zero otherwise, otherwise. So what I want to do, I want to draw uh, this region where our joint 
PDF is non-zero and where is it is zero. So I want to draw that region and that will be the complete solution. So this is X, this is Y. So X is running from zero to one, X is zero to one. And for each x, y is running from minus x to x. So this is y is equal to x, y is equal to x. This is y is equal to minus x, say y is equal to minus x. And uh, we have x is between 0 and 1. So this is 1 again. Uh -huh. So y is between uh, minus x and x means y is in this region and x is between 0 and 1 so we are obtaining uh, this region so if we will denote this by d this region we will obtain that uh, our joint uh, let me summarize maybe i will erase this part too and write what we have obtained it is the answer the answer is the following so f x y the joint PDF is equal to one over two x for for that case if x y is in this region d and zero if x y is outside of that d. So that points that pair of uh, numbers will be distributed like this. Now assume that uh, up to this point we are considering the case when x and y are both discrete or both continuous. Now assume that x and y are jointly distributed and assume that x is discrete with the values x1, x2, etc. And the PMF is uh, probability, well pi is equal to probability x is equal to xi for, for i running from 1, 2, 2, uh, to maybe plus infinity or the number of elements. Uh, X can take only finite number of uh, finite number of values or maybe countably infinite uh, number of values. Now we assume also that for each i, the conditional distribution of y given x is equal to x i is continuous with PDF f y uh, f i of y f the conditional distribution of y given that x is equal to xi is this uh, the, is given by this pdf so then uh, we can calculate the following type of probabilities uh, the probability that y will be in that uh, region or set a we are using total probability formula so let me explain what we have so we want to calculate that y is in a y is in a can be in the several cases say we can have that x is well let me write not here but here so we can have that x is equal to x1 or another case is when x is equal to x2 or etc we can have different cases and if x is equal to x1, we can have, so y is in A, or y is not in A. Or in this case, if x is x2, we can have, again, y is in A, or y is not in A, etc. So we will have these kind of things. Uh, let me write the probability. So uh, the probability that x is x1 is given that uh, by that PMF so x is x1 so here I'm writing the probability that x is equal to x2 etc so we have these probabilities what is this this is the probability that probability that y is in a given that x is x1 So this is the probability that y is not in A given that x is x1. This is not necessary for us. So this is the probability that x is, oh, sorry, not x. 
So y is in A given that x is x2. This is the probability that y is not in A given that x is equal to x2. This is 1 minus this number, etc. So uh, we need to calculate the probability that y is in A. So what are the paths leading to y is in A? So we can have that x is x1 and y is in A or maybe x is x2 and uh, y is in A or etc. So we need to add all these probabilities to obtain the probability that y is in A. So this is the total probability formula, formula and we are writing. So I need to multiply this with that plus this with that etc. So we will have uh, the following. So we are adding the probability that y is in A given that x is equal to xi and we are multiplying with probability x is equal to xi and sum over all possible values of x. So this is the to total probability formula. And because we know that y, the distribution of y given that x is equal to xi is uh, described through the PDF fi so this probability so this probability is exactly equal to the integral over a of that pdf so i will have this e e equality for this probability so probability that y is in a is the sum of uh, probability that y is in a and x is x xi given that not and sorry given that x is xi and times the probability that x will be equal to xi. Now we can continue uh, in particular take here take here instead of a I am taking minus infinity to y. So what I am doing taking a to be minus infinity to y then we will obtain the probability that y is less or equal than y. This will give the value of CDF of y at the point small y. So uh, using that previous uh, slide formula, we will obtain the integral from minus infinity to y of conditional probability where of y when x is equal to xi and the probability multiplied by the probability that x is equal to xi and summed over all possible values of y. Having now the CDF, I can calculate the PDF. If I will calculate the derivative of both sides with respect to y, I will get the, uh, here I will get the PDF of y, and here I will get some formula, and that formula is the following. So this is equal to the derivative of that, and the derivative of this with respect to y will be, this is constant, this doesn't depend on y, uh, P, x is equal to xi and the derivative of this with respect to y is the value of small fi at the point y. So we have obtained the following formula. So the pdf of y in the case when x is equal to uh, x is discrete and for each value of x uh, the distribution of y is given to pdf of y. The PDF of y is the sum, this weighted sum of uh, corresponding PDFs. By the way, this is uh, the, the previous uh, result is very important when talking about uh, mixture distributions. So let me just uh, give the idea how that mixture distribution can be. Uh, obtain it. Say, so assume that proportion of females in some country is 0 0.5. So probability that a person, randomly chosen person in that country is female is 0 0.6. Assume also that the distribution of female heights in that country is normal with the mean 160 and standard deviation 5. And the distribution of male heights is uh, normal with different mean, other mean. 170 and standard deviation 6. So find the distribution of person height in that country. And calculate the probability that the height of that person will be between 115 and 180. 
So what we have in this case, so let me uh, write uh, mathematically what we have. So here we have uh, two random variables. X is showing the, that the person is either female or male. So say X is one if that person will be female. So X if the person, uh, well, let me write, uh, maybe it is better to write X is equal to one if female and X is zero if male. So in that case, I will have Bernoulli with probability uh, one is for female and the proportion of female is 0 0.6, Bernoulli 0 0.6. So I will have this case, uh, this distribution, X is Bernoulli. Now, uh, Y is the height of a person height of a person uh, in that country. Um, but uh, y will be distributed differently for different values of x. So I'm writing, given that x is 1, the distribution of y is the following. So if x is 1, means our person is female, the distribution of height of a female, of a person if uh, she is a female, so this is given as a normal, as being normal, with mean 160 and standard deviation is 5 I'm writing 5 squared because I'm writing variance here okay and also I have the other part that if our person is given that our person is a male so x is 0 the distribution of y the height is 170 and 6 squared with standard deviation 6 now what is asking me uh, the problem. The problem is asking to find the distribution of person height in that country. So uh, say what is the PDF of Y at the point Y. Okay, now having that previous uh, calculations I can easily find this, that. So what I'm doing, first I'm calculating, first I'm calculating the PDF of this, because this is normal, I know the PDF of normal, I am calculating the PDF of this, so I will calculate two PDFs, and then uh, will multiply by these probabilities, corresponding probabilities, and add them to obtain this f of y. So let me do that calculations on the next slide, uh, or on the whiteboard maybe, not next slide. So what we have? Uh, so X is, let me just quickly write what we have, Bernoulli, uh, 0 0.6. So this means that X is taking value 0, 1 with probability 0 0.6, 0 0.4. And Y given X is equal to 1, so this was for females, the height, this is height of a person. This, is, this means the person is female. So normal with 160 and 5 squared. So this means that the uh, PDF is given by this uh, 1 over sigma, so sigma is 5, times square root of 2 pi, 2 pi, sorry, e to the minus the following. So x minus, so in this case, because I am writing uh, the variable is y, I will write y minus the mean, so the mean is 160 squared, over 2 times sigma squared, 2 times 5 squared. So this is the PDF of my conditional PDF of my y given that x is 1. And now uh, I will write that PDF for this conditional distribution, so this is the height, this person is male, in that case we had uh, one normal with 170 as a mean and 6 squared as a variance. So f y given that x is uh, 0 at the point y is the following. 1 over 6 times square root of 2 pi times e to the minus y minus 170 squared over 2 times 6 squared. Now our problem was to calculate f y at y. So what we are doing is the following. Uh, 
In which case, what is the probability that x is 1? It is 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 times this PDF. Plus, what is the probability that x is 0? Well, we have 0 0.4 times this PDF. Now, plugging these values, we will obtain the PDF of y. So this is the mixture distribution. And, uh, and if we will go back, yeah, go back. The uh, next problem was to calculate the probability that the height of person will be between 150 and 180 centimeters. So the problem is to calculate the probability that y is between this and this. And because we have the PDF of y, we can integrate from 150, 150 to 180, that f of y, y, d, uh, y. Well, I will not calculate this. I can do that by using r. I can use tables to calculate, well, separate, plug this value of f y, then separate integrals, then calculate separately for uh, normals. Um, but I will not do that. This is not so uh, important for me. The important part was to obtain the uh, PDF. So uh, what is the idea here? Let me just explain. Say, when we are considering the height distribution, well, uh, usually we are, we are not having this kind of curve for persons because uh, for females the heights are usually uh, smaller than for males so instead of this we are usually having this kind of curve and this is important so for height distribution we are having this kind of curve and how to model that uh, the distribution well this can be obtained as a mixture of two normals and people are modeling by using mixture of normals with some probability it is this normal and with other probability it is uh, another normal uh, okay so let me erase this let me go back erase this and just show one example for you maybe this is from Penn State uh, elementary statistics course and if I will move forward, so some examples of uh, real data, <coughs> say height and shoe size, okay. So this is example for height and weight of persons from this uh, web page. I, I have that web page, I have that data, in fact. So you can see that heights and weights data set consist of some cloud of points and we have considered this kind of points in this lecture so I was showing this kind of uh, elliptical shape of points so these real uh, data of heights and weights of some persons now what I want to show is the following so going to the original uh, data so exploring relationship in body di dimensions <coughs> So we have some um, measurements, some uh, relationship between chest diameter, etc., for females, males, etc. But I want to show that uh, cloud of points for height and weight relationship. Yeah. So this is uh, height and weight relationship, and you can see that. Uh, well, this was in the previous uh, web page uh, without showing. Uh, males and females but here we have males are here in blue and females are here and if I will uh, find the marginal distribution if I will draw the marginal histogram for females I will have concentrated here and for males I will have concentrated here so overall the height distribution will have two peaks in fact so it will be uh, it is better to model not with just one normal but with a mixture of normals the same works also for weights so uh, male weights are concentrated here and female weights are maybe concentrated here 
Okay, and this joint distribution is something like a cloud of points in some elect elliptical shape of cloud of points. Okay, let's move back to our to our joint PDFs and conditional PDFs. Now the other case. So up to this point, I've considered the case when x is discrete and y for each value of x. Uh, the conditional probability of y is continuous. Conditional distribution of y is continuous. Now the other case. Assume x and y are jointly distributed and assume x is continuous with PDF f of x. So for each value of x, we are assuming now that y is discrete with this PMF. So x is continuous, y is discrete and I'm con considering this uh, conditional probability. So if y is discrete, y is taking some values yj and the PMF that y is equal to yj, probability that y is equal to yj given that x is equal to x is given. Assume it is given. Then say we want to calculate the probability that y is equal to yj. Then in the uh, analogy of the discrete case, we can use some kind of total probability formula. Let me first ex explain what we have. So we want to have y is equal to yj. But here the cases are infinite. So x can take the value, say x0. And in that case, I can have y is equal to yj or y is not equal to yj. Say y is not equal to yj. Or I can have x is equal to, that capital X maybe, this is our random variable, capital X is equal to x1. And in that case we can have y is equal to yj, uh, y is equal, not equal to yj, etc. So we are interested in this path, this path leading to y is equal to yj, y is equal to yj, etc. But the problem, the difference between total probability formula and the, the thing I will write here is that these cases that can happen are infinite, not countably infinite, because uh, x is continuous, x can take count, non-countably many values of x. So this number is very uh, large, so non-countably infinite, in fact. So I need to add over these possible values. So what are here? So here it is easy to write. This is the probability that y is equal to yj, given that x is equal to that x0 or x, x0, let me write x0. And what is here? Here need, we need to have the probability that x is equal to x0. But if x is continuous, this probability will be, uh, will be zero. In fact, here we are writing in some sense f the pdf of uh, the pdf of x at the point x0 and we are multiplying this and instead of adding all this we are integrating this because we have countably infinite case well this can be made this is not rigorous i'm just giving some idea how to obtain that uh, where this formula is obtained rigorous is uh, by doing some mathematical calculations, by dividing the range of x into small parts and then calculating separately for each part. So this is when x is between this point, that point. This is when x is between this point and that point, etc. So fortunately, I will not do that and move forward just writing that formula to calculate the probability that y is equal to yj. And this is the integral over all possibilities for x. Uh, for each value of x, I'm considering the probability that y is equal to yj, so given that x is x. And I'm multiplying by f of x, that probability, in some sense, the probability that, that can happen. This is not the probability. Uh, this is not rigorous. And I'm adding, that is, I'm integrating over r. Now, one example. So assume p is a random variable so up to this point we, we were using p as a probability now i am assuming that that probability is unknown and it, it is a random variable so our p is a random variable with the pdf uh, f of x is equal to six times x times 
uh, 1 minus x. So what I have here, I'm drawing that PDF. This is 0, this is 1, this is 1 over 2. So this is f of x. The PDF of p, this is p. Sorry, p. So most probably p is around that 1 over 2. But it can be anything from 0 to 1. And uh, PDF is zero otherwise. And we are assuming that Y is Bernoulli P with that P. So this is random. That P is random. For each value of P, Y is Bernoulli with that P. So I can write that distribution of Y is zero, one, P, sorry, one minus P. Okay. But P is itself a random number from 0 to 1 and distributed like this, most probably around that 1, 1 over 2. That is why is Bernoulli random variable with uncertain probability P, which is most probably close to 0 0.1. So calculate what is the probability that Y is 0. And calculate what is the probability that Y will take the value 1. Well, you can say that the probability that uh, y is equal to 1 is p, but p is itself random. I do not know this value. I need to consider all possible cases. In possible cases, p can be anything from 0 to 1. That's why I'm using the previous formula for me. Sorry. Uh, previous formula. Now, I'm not writing in this way, and I'm writing in the following way. So... This is equal to, I'm integrating over R the following. So probability that Y is equal to 1. So in this case, um, I'm not writing correctly. Let me correct everything and write correctly. Correct way of writing this is the following. Okay. So first, um, x is distributed like that. So we know the PDF of x. So no need for writing this, maybe. And I'm writing the distribution of y. Uh, I'm writing, so not the distribution of y is given, but the conditional distribution of y is given. So the conditional distribution of y, given that p is equal to some value x, is the following. So 0, 1. If p is x, then I will have x here and 1 minus x here. If my probability is x, something from 0 to 1, if probability is this much, 0 0.7, say, then the distribution of y is 0, 1 with 0, 7, 0, 3. If x is 0 0.8, then I have 1 with 0 0.8 probability and 0 0.2 here. So this is given. This is... Uh, what is given here. Okay, now I'm calculating, I was asked, uh, we are asked to calculate this and that, say I'm calculating for one. This is equal to the integral over r minus infinity to plus infinity of the following probability that y is equal to one given that p is equal to x times the value of our PDF of P at the point X DX. Okay. Now this F PDF of uh, P is zero outside of that interval zero one. So I will left with integral from zero to one. Uh, the value of this is six times X times one minus X. So I can plug. And now I need to find this value, but this is easy. If p is equal to x, if p is equal to x, then the probability that y will be will be one is just x. So this is that value. So I will write x times. So this is six times x times one minus x dx. And if you will calculate this probability, you will obtain one over two. And similarly, probability that y is equal to 0 will be 1 over 2. Okay, 
Well, this was obtained, well, we have obtained uh, symmetric values. Well, the probability that y is 1 and y is 0 is 1 over 2 because of the symmetry of this. But instead of this distribution, I can say, I could give, say, something like this, the distribution of p is something like this. So more probably that my p is in this region. In that case, uh, you will obtain that this is larger than that. So you can try to use other distributions uh, for P, other PDFs for P. So uh, this example and these calculations uh, are very important for Bayesian statistics. So there is a uh, part of statistics called Bayesian statistics, uh, which is using, which is doing this kind of uh, calculations a lot of times. So this much. Thank you.